Quinn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And can I preface my contribution by acknowledging the harm that alcohol causes in our society, and that's been alluded to during the course of this debate. One of the things that I understand and I'm told about politics is that it is about the exchange of ideas. And in exchanging ideas, in my view, it's very important that those ideas are based on fact and not mistruths and rhetoric. And sadly, this alcohol debate is riddled with mistruths and rhetoric. And we've only had to have the contribution from the member of the Green Party who repeatedly said that supermarkets sell alcohol as lost leaders. And she knows full well that the pricing lists were provided to the Select Committee, which I have in front of me, and the discount regimes that they provide depending on volume. Yet she insisted, in my view, in misleading this House, by saying that the uh, supermarkets sell at a discount, uh, uh, sell as lost leaders. The other point, the other point that I'd like to say, suggest that uh, was made was the point that uh, Chester Burroughs made was that the two things that surprised me about the presentations, and I should say in response to the uh, urgings of Leanne Dalzell in this debate and the praise that she gave to Geoffrey Palmer. My suggestion to Geoffrey Palmer was that he didn't need, in fact, to spend thousands and thousands of dollars travelling the country to find out and inform himself about alcohol. All he had to do was open up his window on Roxburgh Street and take a whiff in the air or to actually walk two minutes down the road. It's all downhill, as Charles Chevelle knows and gone into Courtney Place and he would have found out the problems of alcohol. But no, no, no. Typical, typical Geoffrey Palmer, bludging on the taxpayer, doing a roadshow round, round, round New Zealand and, and then producing a report full of rhetoric. A point of order, the Honourable Leander. I wouldn't normally do this, uh, Mr Speaker, but um, that last comment, uh, I know it's not directed to a member of this House, but to a former Prime Minister and now the head of our Law Commission who's provided an independent report to the Government on the subject matter of this debate, I feel that those comments are completely out of order. Uh, I'm not persuaded that at this point they are, but... Uh, uh, can I just make the comment that the, the person controlling the sound might uh, moderate that a little bit in this instance as well? Paul Quinn. Thank you, point, Mr Speaker. Point of order, Dr Kennedy Graham. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I, I take exception to the, insinuate, the comment from Mr Quinn earlier that uh, my colleague, Sue Kedgley, was misleading the House. No, I, I, th I think um, he, the member who, who was speaking was referring to the information given and I don't think that the way in which he couched that, um, any slur was intended. That's, that's my interpretation. I listen very carefully. Oh, well, I have ruled on it, but I'll hear the member. And my understanding from what was said, and we could check the record in due course, is that he said that in full knowledge of information that was supplied to the committee, she made a comment that, in his view, was misleading the House. Yeah, I think that is a debating point. Paul Quinn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, but as Chester Burroughs said, um, the, 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 the overwhelming impression left with me through the select committee process, and I should say the days of passing judgment on the, on the roar of the Coliseum are way gone, and I would have thought the Green Party, if anyone knew that, was the Green Party. But there were two things, as Chester said, that stood out, and one was that everyone blamed everyone else. And, of course, the classics was Mr Bruce Robinson and the hospitality industry representative who said, not us, blame the supermarkets. And everyone blamed the supermarkets. And the other thing was, do as I say, not as I do. And the classic of that to me was when five doctors turned up in front of me and then espoused the fact that they should ban alcohol sales from the supermarket. So after a while, and Charles Savelle was chairing the meeting, after everyone had had their go, I quietly said... Um, Tell me, how many of you people drink? And four of them put their hand up. 
And then I said, and where do you buy your alcohol from? Oh, the supermarkets. Oh, the supermarkets. And you want me to ban it from supermarkets because you can't um, stop yourself buying it from the supermarkets? Oh, it's not us. It's not us. We're saving the young people. Well, see, and this was the problem with the whole of the submissions. Everyone blamed everyone else. And of course, and then here's another classic. In the, we've, we hear a lot about the Law Commission report. In the Law Commission report, there's three pages. Yes, I have. There are three pages. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Three pages dedicated to licensing trusts. To, to licensing trusts. There are only two licensing trusts in New Zealand which still have monopoly sale rights. One is in Southland and the other is in um, Waitakere. Yeah. The statistics, the statistics out of Southland and the licensing trusts show, and this is from the research from the Parliamentary Library, that alcohol-related violent crimes rate in Southland is 36 per cent. In the Southern District, which takes in a much wider group, it's 31 per cent, and in the national average, it's 33 per cent. In other words, in an area where alcohol is sold only through licensing authority outlets, no supermarkets can sell it there, you actually have a higher violent violent crime rate. And yet everyone's blaming the supermarkets. And so I say that if we are going to actually get a paradigm shift in our drinking culture, then let's focus on the facts. And there isn't any simple solution. I agree. In fact, I often think that the simplest solution to this problem is actually to probably increase the age to about 25 and get a paradigm shift. Now, is that ever going to happen? No. But the reality is, and in fact, in the Sunday Times Star, we had a new theory. The The latest theory, right, in the Sunday Times Star... Research shows a link to poor parenting. You see? So you tell, you tell me what the rule. I mean, here, this is the sort of rhetoric that goes around. Just one last one. Gareth George from the New Zealand Herald. Sorry about this, Derek. Gareth says on the 16th of June, Law Commission Alcohol Report recommended raising the legal drinking age to 20. Did no such thing. It actually recommended the purchase age be raised to 20. Even the commentators can't get it right. So I say, let's focus on the real facts and try and reach, in fact, a, a long-lasting solution. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, speaker. Ian Lees-Galloway.